Today my story will be different from others. Today I'll tell you how tricky the world can be and that every shining stone is far not a diamond. This man tricked the entire world, had raised doubt in startups, yet proved that overconfidence might have an extreme value over numbers, finance, and any bold facts. Adam Newman, the founder of WeWork, and how did he pretend his company to look like a tech startup worth $47 billion? Adam Newman was born in 1979 in Beersheba, Israel. Why is this important? Well, because Adam was raised in a kibbutz. Let's stop for a minute here. A kibbutz is a type of settlement that is unique to Israel, not economically motivated, collective community in which residents share everything among themselves. They all have different jobs in the community, either in agriculture or in the kitchen, the kindergarten or in the children's house. Even if members work outside of the kibbutz, they share earned money with others. Members live in modest accommodations, and children live with their peers, seeing their parents only for a few hours each day. And what's interesting, today there are over 270 kibbutz in Israel, and they are wide open for tourists in case you ever would want to drop a visit. This part of Adam's life is vital, because it has an impact on everything Adam did later on. When Adam was 17 years old, he joined the Israeli Navy, and he actually said that serving taught him what it means to be part of something greater than yourself. So you get the idea of maybe why Adam wanted to bring people together at work establishing WeWork later. Perhaps it was all driven by his childhood in the community and backed up by his service. Okay, now let's remember what we all heard about WeWork at its peak in 2019. It is a tech company that provides co-working spaces internationally across 850 locations to 600,000 members, making $3.5 billion a year with 12,500 employees and $47 billion market capitalization, which is crazy, because SpaceX, for instance, was $33 billion at that time. Yeah, we all also read articles about wheat found on his private jet board, failed IPO, and Apple original series We Crashed. And now, I want to take you to the very beginning of this fascinating startup story. Adam moved to New York City in 2001 with his sister and enrolled in a college, where he entered an entrepreneurship competition and submitted his idea called Concept Living, which did happen later as we live. But at the college, he didn't make it further than just a written proposal because his professor said it would be impossible to raise so much money to change the way people live. During his studies, he tried to run a business, and not just any basic concept of buying and selling, but actually inventing stuff. For instance, he had a line of women's shoes with collapsible heels, inspired by his model sister, but it never made it to the stores and failed at the stage of the idea. He later started a new business, baby pants with knee pads to protect the child's knees as the infant crawled on the floor. He called it crawlers. Adam easily gets along with people, that's no wonder, and he actually convinced his marketing professor in the college to fly to China with him to find a supplier and fill out the first order, but when he received his samples, they were a mess. He didn't make it to work and shut his idea down. He later turned his knee pads model into a mass market baby clothing company, Egg Baby, with ordinary items. For five years, he struggled to make payroll each month for his small team of eight employees. It was a constant struggle, and with only four credits left, he dropped out of school in 2006, deciding to give every bit of his energy to his business. To be fair, Egg Baby is still up and running, but Adam is no longer involved in day-to-day -day operations. I also feel like it is also worth noticing that Adam moved and enrolled in a college thanks to his grandparents' support, in case you were wondering who paid for this life stage. And he was also four or five years older than his classmates and one said that they taught him about diversity, American culture, and most importantly, millennials. And here's no joke, this knowledge actually helped him a lot later with WeWork, understanding what his target audience prefer and value in the work environment. Anyways, soon after launching Act Baby, Newman met WeWork founder Miguel McKilvey. The two bonded over their backgrounds and competitive strengths, and McKilvey convinced Newman to move Act Baby offices to the same building he was working in Brooklyn. About the same time, Adam met his future wife, Rebecca Paltrow. She had done a lot before meeting Adam. She traded stocks, studied Buddhism, stayed with the monks in Drahamsala, and even been to the Dalai Lama's birthday party. When she met Adam, she said she realized that she met her soulmate. 
Newman not only fell in love with Rebecca, but also fell in love with a former warehouse in his neighborhood. He found the landlord, Joshua Gutman, and asked for the building, highlighting the fact it was empty anyway. Eventually, Gutman, Newman, and McKilvey co-founded Green Desk, an environmentally themed co-working space. It was perfect timing. Although it might have felt different at that time, because in the spring of 2008, the US economy started to buckle. Gutman was worried that a real estate downturn would ruin their plans, but it was not a real estate business. On the contrary, it was presented as a service. People would get laid off, so they would start their own businesses, and with the shortage of money, their offer would be just perfect. Adam was right. Green Desk filled up. Rebecca pitched in at Green Desk, where she helped McKilvey run tours and assist members, while Adam got out of the baby clothes business. But the duo didn't want anyone else on board, in this case Gutman, so they sold their stake in the company to Gutman for a $3 million valuation that gave them $300,000 in initial cash and rest in gradual payments. So to start WeWork now, they had some money, but they surely needed more. Most landlords at that time feared co-workings, with its constant food traffic and unknown tenants, the same way many also fear Airbnb. Yet, they managed to convince their first landlord to give them just one floor for a trial. Later, Adam had no problem convincing investors and landlords, as he was touring them around their first property, which didn't just look pretty good, but also had a lot of members. Adam and Miguel approached Joel Schreiber, a real estate developer and investor, and pitched him their idea. According to some versions, Schreiber invested $15 million for 33% stake right away. And it is a good story. But actually, Schreiber couldn't commit to the entire amount. In a 2018 deposition, Schreiber said that he only invested between $1 to $2 million in WeWork. Yet he claimed that the company would have never happened without him. Well, we wouldn't know that for sure anyway, so I would rather not argue his point of view. Because from that moment, WeWork started rapidly. In 2011, it became associated to a startup hub. It had over 350 startup companies as its customers a year later. The company started its expansion at a rather crazy pace. There were so many investors by 2014, everyone wanted a piece of the fastest growing lease of a new office space. WeWork had 200 employees, 1.5 million square feet of space, and 10,000 members. Its business model with gross margins of approximately 60% made even the most hardened, stodgy real estate developers reconsider them being skeptical about WeWork. As for the customers, the membership included not just a desk, but also services such as security, reception, broadband, printing, and other people around, you know, to connect with, discuss your ideas and or work issues. And yeah, some members appreciated free beer tap and wine, mimosas parties, and summer camp, which wasn't free, but for a fair price, it included included accommodation, transportation, food, drinks, and entertainment. Now when I said of it, it does sound more like a community or not a business model, right? In 2016, things looked pretty good. They doubled the number of members to 80,000 customers and opened up in six more countries or 18 cities. More investors got attracted to the company's rising popularity, not just brand-wise, but also the strong awareness it had among the younger generation. Legend Holdings, which is a Chinese investment holding company, was interested in WeWork expansion in China. The investment of $430 million valued WeWork at $16 billion now. Do you remember? Remember how Adam was turned down by his professor in college saying that no one could possibly raise enough money to change the way people lived? Well, it happens that in 2016 WeWork had just the money to give this idea a try. It founded Willy. And it did look quite good since the company offered ready-to-live-in accommodation at a fair price. And of course, it was a major attraction to young people who just moved to New York City to live a dream and Willie's offer was tempting for them. To run a little ahead of myself, WeWork terminated this business line in 2021. Apparently, things didn't look as good then. But back to the story in 2017, when WeWork launched an online store for services and software for its members and started to go on a tech startup. But not just because of the so-called networking platform where its members could communicate with one another, but also for conference room booking software, a digital marketing company, and a product that used smartphone data to track how groups of employees flow throughout an office. 
You wonder why the company wanted to move from real estate-based to tech terms? Well, tech company usually means it can transform whole industries, achieve expansion of scale and scope at breakneck speed, and make enormous profits without requiring significant capital investments. Another thing is that market capitalization for tech companies is 10 to 20 times its revenue, whereas usually it's 3 to 5 times more. And yes, you are right, that tech companies' product is something that can have a significant impact on a larger number of people, but this one has scaled to its membership base. So, to put it simply, WeWork always was, and is until today, a modern-day real estate company, purchasing long-term leases from landlords and renting them out as short-term leases to tenants, but does offer extra services and contributes to its built community. In 2017, WeWork was heavily financed by Chinese companies to expand in China. SoftBank and Holy Capital, which is owned by Legend Holdings, invested $500 million at first. But a little later, Adam had an opportunity to meet the founder of SoftBank, Masayoshi Sano. Wait, let's stop right here for those who haven't yet heard of such a man. Masayoshi Sano is a Japanese billionaire technology entrepreneur, investor, and a philanthropist who founded a $100 billion vision fund to invest in emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, robotics, and the Internet of Things. Masayoshi San was the richest person in the world for quite some time and got very popular known for his insane investments and great failures just recently. Frankly, he claimed he would have personal connections with CEOs of funded companies by Vision Fund, and he didn't lie, he had very good relationships with Adam. They both shared their community views and a desire to bring people together. Masayoshi-san early invested in Jack Ma, Alibaba founder, when it was just a young startup company, and for some reason he did believe that this success would follow him along with Adam's venture. No wonder that same year in 2017, WeWork raised $4.4 billion in the Series D. Actually, take a moment to look at the graph of the series of funding and the company's valuation throughout the years. Many people claim that it was Matayoshi san who insisted Adam grow as quickly as possible. With the money his fund invested, San wanted Adam to go aggressive, multiply the number of locations, and scale WeWork's revenue and brand awareness. And this is when everything went a little rocky. Starting with the company hiding its losses, Adam making tremendous spending on a private jet, heavy smoking and drinking, he became unpredictable and troubled. In early 2019, while still CEO, he charged the company $5.9 million to purchase the intellectual property he owned related to the company, including trademarks to the names WeWork and Willie. To be fair, he did gift the money he received back to the company a while later, when he was publicly accused of it. Newman boasted unrealistic profit projections in interviews and guided the company on a reckless expansion that was costing billions. He also had made several ethically questionable moves that concerned investors, including charging the company millions to lease properties he owned and selling off a total of $870 million in shares before the failed IPO. Oh yeah, about that. Before the IPO, WeWork received another $2 billion from SoftBank at a $47 billion valuation. But Masayoshi-san at first was tempted to invest $16 billion and later said that he wanted to give the money because he truly believes in the company's future, despite the huge pandemic impact on the company or a questionable behavior of Adam, and yet his partners insisted he would invest only $2 billion for now. In August 2019, WeWork filed Form S1. I'm not sure why did they do it since they probably did know that they're revealing to the public their significant losses, expensive lease agreements, and complex relationship with its founder. Then everything happened within the blink of an eye. The company was publicly evaluated at around $10 billion, far not the $47 billion it achieved in January. WeWork postponed its IPO. Anna was pushed out of the company because the board now considered him a harm to the company. I mean, as if the board just realized this fact. Instead, he was retained as a consultant with an annual salary of $46 million. And this is not the only money he received signing over the board. I did discuss this story with my friends, and many of them believe that Adam is some kind of evil that tricked the whole world, questioned the image of business startups, and made this almost impossible for young companies to attract any investors, since many people were now afraid of making such a tremendous mistake, just like WeWork's investors did. But I don't quite share this point of view, because come on, investors couldn't just blindly invest any money, it had to be rationalized. And even if tabloids argue that Masayoshi san decided to invest in WeWork after a 14 minutes long meeting, it was impossible. Because 
We don't talk about his private funds, he had a whole team of analysts and consultants to finalize the deal. And also, just imagine the amount of money that was given to Adam's venture and the amount of pressure and attention he received those years. And believe me, I'm not, I'm not saying it all to make him look good. He obviously had made some questionable moves, and yet he's a human being and could have just been overwhelmed with all that was happening. What do you think of this story? I would love to hear your opinion in the comments below this video. Am I crazy to say that Adam may be overly criticized with a lot of drama involved that might not have much to do with the business itself? This story was picked up by the media, Apple TV featuring We Crash series and Hulu with its documentary film We Work or the making and breaking of a $47 billion unicorn. In a way, it popularizes the story. Some may just think this is the way the business world works. Also, through my research, I had a feeling that the media had placed traps all over the place along WeWork's progress, kept pushing towards all the drinking and smoking drama of Adam, along with rumors and speculations, a lot of published speculation. Is it just me, or is this media hunt so yellow? Anyways, Adam Newman later founded a new residential real estate company, Flow. Yes, again real estate company, but with housing this time. The startup is initially planning to operate 3,000 apartment units purchased by Newman in Nashville, Atlanta and Miami. The appropriate aim of Flow is to create a branded product in the housing market with consistent community features. Reimagining how real estate works in the US. According to Newman, they seek to create a sense of simulated ownership for the tenants in their properties and keep them there for a longer period. This business was funded by Andresin Horowitz, a private venture capital firm in the US. Not just any venture company, but the benchmark and flagship of venture capitalists that invested in Facebook, Twitter, Skype, and many, many other successful enterprises. There's actually a thing that if this firm invests in something, it must be really good. And believe me, this company was so much criticized for this decision. Despite that, it's a pretty successful company with $35 billion in assets under management across multiple funds. I guess we'll see a little later how this business would turn out, but it comes with a little concern that Flo received a $350 million initial investment from Andresin Horowitz, valuing the company at over $1 billion and making it a unicorn month before commencing operations. As for Matayoshi san, he did say that he was embarrassed and ashamed when asked to talk about the way he had run the SoftBank Vision Fund. He admitted that he had made massive mistakes in investments into US tech companies, WeWork in particular, which, as we early established, not a tech company. And from then on, it's true to say that the public would be very skeptical towards any company that Sun invested in just because of his failures with WeWork, Uber, and many others. As for WeWork or We Company, it has surely gone through a lot of adjustments, vacated 66 locations, and renegotiated lower rent and laid off thousands of employees. It has become a public company via special purpose acquisition company with a 9 billion valuation and merged with Bobex Acquisition Corporation. This means that a so-called shell corporation listed on a stock exchange, thus making WeWork public without going through the traditional IPO process. Seems odd, yeah, for sure, but this merit does exist. So who am I to argue, right? Frankly, WeWork share today is worth 20 cents, and its market capitalization is $426.14 million. And as I usually say, to keep up learning and success is just the number of attempts, this time I do mean that it is important to listen and analyze various companies' stories of success and failures, just like with WeWork or SoftBank and powerful figures, Adam Newman or Matayoshi san They both had their ups and downs, accomplished many goals and had regrets along the way. But it is important for us guys to know what exactly they did wrong and learn from their mistakes. So keep up learning guys, success is just the number of attempts.